Uh, Clint, please, we're, we're ready to start. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being here. Uh, I'm Chris Myers, Fox beginning its 23rd season of covering NASCAR. We've enjoyed the partnership, the broadcast partnership uh, through the years, going back to that first 2001 Daytona 500, which is, of course, a week from Sunday, the Super Bowl in between on, on Fox, by the way. And celebrating 75 years of NASCAR, we'll have the 65th running of the Daytona 500, and perfect here, the sequel, Run It Back, Take to the Clash at the Coliseum, which was so successful last year, a unique event with a great response. And thank you, too, for all of your cooperation with turning a, a football field here into, and now this year, the 100th anniversary of the Coliseum, a place, as you know, that has had Olympic events, World Series, uh, Super Bowls, et cetera, et cetera. You know, NASCAR has shown a lot of unique things recently, but even historically, they've played football, NFL games, preseason games at Bristol, they've raced cars at at Soldier Field before and continuing to grow in every way that they can. So, uh, and we'll open it up to questions for all of you for our panel. I just wanted to have you meet uh, most of our crew, our, our on-camera crew. We have a terrific production crew behind us as well. Uh, Chuck McDonald on the end is, is our producer this year, a familiar face. He produced uh, NASCAR's pre-race show some years ago. It was a went over to college football and has produced uh, our, our college football games with uh, Gus and Joel, uh, some outstanding work there, and he's coming back to be in the truck uh, with our director, uh, Artie Kempner. We have Jamie McMurray, Daytona 500 winner. We have Regan Smith. We have Adam Alexander. That's Larry McReynolds in the game show coat. Thanks, Larry. Come on down. No, it just – by the way, we were driving over. It was, ni it was nice driving with Larry because he knows everything about cars, and we're listening to the radio. And I was trying to ask him some questions about the, the race this year and the cars. He kept wanting me to turn up, uh, you know, Wiz Khalifa came on the radio. He wanted me to crank it up, which was a little distracting. We're going to have Wiz Khalifa here, of course, for, for this event. Uh, Josh Sims is here, Clint Boyer, of course, Mike Joy, Tony Stewart, Jamie Little, and uh, Shannon here is co-host along with Adam Alexander, uh, the Race Hub program. So I'll throw out a few questions, and then you guys can, can follow up. And, and, Mike, we'll start with you. Um, so with all the years in NASCAR, I mentioned uh, the, the clash, the street race in Chicago. We have the Easter night race at Bristol, uh, dirt track on, on Fox. So NASCAR is doing a lot of different things in this 75-year the, the anniversary. And what does that say to you about what you've seen over the years and what you think we're seeing now and going forward? Well, we started 1-1. One, one. We started out at, at very small tracks all around the country, mostly dirt, uh, moved to paved tracks. And we started out with... 50 to 60 races a year on tracks that were owned by 50 or more different promoters. And it was the, it was truly a traveling circus. And now, uh, or at least since the Winston Cup era, the schedule has become much more manageable, 30 to 36 races. And now we're in a position where all the tracks but two are owned by one of two entities, NASCAR or Speedway Motorsports. So the dynamic of the sport has changed. We used to come to Daytona and have 60 cars trying to make the Daytona 500. And Bill France Jr.'s mantra was, we're going to make money. We're going to give you a chance to make some too. And that has evolved into what we now know as the charter system, where 36 teams are present every race, 36 drivers, and their sponsors know they'll be in every race. So it's really been a huge paradigm shift over the year in how the sport is operated, how the sport is funded, there was no TV money until 1979, and now media rights are a huge part of the sport. So I, I don't know how any sport could have transformed itself over 75 years in such a huge way uh, as NASCAR has done, Chris. Oh, thank you. And, and Clint, uh, kind of the, the everyman's driver who is uh, relatively new to the, the, bro the broadcast booth with Mike Choi, and a kind of a, a rotation of, of analysts on the, on the pre-show from the track and then, and then in the booth. How, how would you describe your experience as a guy in the booth from the race car and then working with some different people along with a veteran like Mike? Well, it's fun, first and foremost. You get a chance to cover the sport that you know, gave you so much. I love the sport. I love the, the characters within the sport. You hear talk, uh, Mike talk about the characters. I mean, that's what this sport is founded on. And if it's going to move on into the future for another 75 years, it's going to need those characters. So trying to build those names up into characters and the storylines within that, that's a challenge. It's fun. Um, it's meaningful. And, and we take pride in, in being able to do that each and every week and all different types of racetracks. You know, a short track right here, it all started last year with a brand new race car 
right? A brand new race car, never been done before, brand new opportunity at a track at the LA Coliseum, a new market, a new track that we've never seen, way shorter, way out of bounds than we've ever seen, knocked it out of the park, the parody was here. I mean, look at the uh, last year's champion, Joey Logano, won this race, by the way. And then you look at Ross Chastain, missed the race, and finished second in points. All across the board, saw a lot of wild stories. And, you know, those, again, are, are the most fun things to cover. The booth, mate, it's been fun. <laughs> I, I came in with Jeff Gordon, chased his ass around the racetrack <laughs> all these years, right? And, uh, you know, one would have thought that we hated one another, but we didn't. We, we really enjoyed uh, – one another off that racetrack and uh, once we got in the booth had a lot of fun but you know over, over the course of last year uh, Mike and I enjoyed having different guys in the booth such as Tony Stewart I mean a legend right it's so much fun to uh, to share I guess our experience from the booth have those new guys in and be able to ask questions and, and uh, have a fresh you know perspective on what we're seeing so it's been a lot of fun, man. Yeah, and uh, Tony's yeah. not here for this race just because his number came up. We got to the end of last <laughs> season, and we told Jacob Ullman, who's the VP in charge of talent development, how many races does Tony want to do, and, and then we'll figure <laughs> out how we fill in the rest. Yeah, no, We're we, happy to have We him. have, yes, Tony. Welcome back. And, and a select number of races, more races. He, he began it with Foxer last year, and, of course, the Daytona 500, and we'll be there again. Uh, this year, so we're glad to have you, Tony, a Hall of Fame driver, and you know, smoke and who well, we can't lose him to those straight candy. line races anyway. I mean, he's a circle; <laughs> well, he goes in circles. As a matter of fact, straight line uh, stuff, uh, Tony. How, so you got, let's see, you got the the SRX series, NHRA race teams, uh, getting behind the wheel of a top fuel car yourself in, in 2023. So, what what is the draw to come back in a booth with Clint Boyer? I mean, my <laughs> goodness, I, it's uh, called community service. So. Uh, <laughs> I still have hours left to complete, so here I am again. So uh, <laughs> doing your time, <laughs> yes. fulfill my obligations. But uh, uh, yeah, I'm excited. It's um, we got a lot on our plate this year, which we'll announce some of that in the next couple weeks. But um, it is fun to come back and work with this crew. I, I was talking to Mike on the ride over, and I remember last year on this day riding in the car, and I'm like, I was riding with you as well, and I'm like, I have no business doing this. <laughs> I, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know why they hired me to do this. This is going to be a train wreck. And I had so much fun with it, uh, the three races I got to do last year, and uh, to get asked to come back this year and come with this crew. Got in the car this morning, and I'm like, man, I have really been looking forward to doing this. So uh, this is a great family to work with. It's a bunch of professionals that uh, have been around this sport a long time and know the ins and outs of the sport, and it's uh, a lot of fun to be a part of this team and just be able to take our knowledge of what we know about the sport and, and help portray it to the fans. Yeah, and, and you know, some of us here, we, we cover other sports and have, but the three who we just met here, they, they have lived, breathed in NASCAR their whole lives. You can see the passion come out, even when we're not on the air. They, they help us with things to look for, things to bring out uh, in, in a broadcast. I always loved, Tony, Tony was always so candid. Uh, as a driver, <laughs> that and I we saw it's a little bit way of a, to put Mike, it. right too much, and we were but Mike, I, we saw a little bit of a filter from him, right? I mean, as a broadcaster, which was was pretty good, I thought. No, there's no filter. No filter. We, no, we don't. I was trying to I was trying to cover him. There we don't go. want a filter. You know, we want we want the real Tony Stewart. We want that to come out. We want everybody to know uh, just exactly what he's thinking, and that's where Clint. I don't know how Clint knows how to push his buttons, but. <laughs> <laughs> Man, we, we get into a discussion about something, and these two, they just let it's, us stand back and say, when do we go to commercial? And these guys just let yeah, it rip. It, no, it's a great time. And it's great to hear them react to what's going on on the track, obviously, because it's not as predictable when, when things happen. And, and the, the great crew that shows it to you, I mean, we really, from the audio that we bring, I mean, being at the race is one thing, watching on Fox, uh, the pictures we have. And, and Chuck McDonald, who I mentioned, is taking over as our, our producer. I got to work with on the, on the pre-show in some of the earlier years at Fox that had Great job of college football. He's worked on the NFL with, with John Madden in his er earlier years, so so his career is, has reached new heights here, different heights, I should say. So, Chuck, uh, working with this crew, and I know you've settled in, you know a lot of the folks all, already. Storylines for this year and, and, and what it looks like from your view sitting in the booth as the producer of actual Fox races. I mean, the thing that excites me the most, being outside watching it as a fan last year as opposed to working on it and having not been out here in a while, it was just the momentum. The, you just feel like the energies in this the sport, the new tracks, the car that seem to even things out. And I'm really excited, like all the young faces in the sport. So I'm just excited that the fan base is just as passionate as college football. And I, good, I yeah. like that as well. Good connection there because, yeah, just like the in the, in the pre 
show for college football, kind of like what we try to do at the track and in Charlotte to bring you closer. Look forward to that, Chuck. And they'll be, again, with questions for some specific uh, technical things with our crew. Chuck can help you uh, with, with that. Let's go to now uh, Adam and, and Shannon and Josh, who you see them on, on Race Hub. It's, it's the go-to place for, uh, for America to, during the week, especially for, for NASCAR. Uh, on FS1, and I just you can all comment, and we've seen some of it already. If you've been watching the 75th year anniversary, Shannon, you can start uh, in terms of what you have in mind for the year, how to celebrate it, how to cover the races, do what you normally do, but that on top of it makes it a little bit more historical and a little more interesting. Yeah, I think it's um, it, it's certainly we're going to be reflecting. We're doing these 75 seconds of 75 years um, every week, kind of looking back at some of the more significant moments in this sport. But I also think just, I mean, being here, right, I, I know all of you guys that were here last year, when we left after the race last year, there were fans that had never been to a NASCAR race before that came up to me and said, like, you're so lucky you get to do this every weekend. You're so lucky you get to cover this sport. So I think while we're looking back at 75 years, we're also really looking ahead and, uh, you know, we have some, some of the older guys who are going to be leaving the sport and the younger guys who are really stepping into those roles. And I just think it's the evolution of it has been so incredible over the last couple years uh, just to see where this sport is, is moving. And then also as we continue to look back on the 75 years. Right, Adam? Yeah, I would agree with that. And, and I go back to something that, that Chuck said, and that is momentum. And, and we talk so much about the history of the sport. But in 75 years and, and as we go into 2023, we're coming off – one of the best seasons ever. Uh, and that's not just a talking point. You look at the numbers, 19 winners, five drivers winning for the first time in their career. So there truly is tremendous momentum going to new markets. Last year we were in St. Louis for the first time. Shannon mentioned being here at the LA Coliseum, a street course in Chicago, a throwback race to North Wilkesboro. The all-star race will be on Fox. So there is a lot of energy right now in the sport, so much to be excited about when you look at what's happened in the past and, and where we're going. And I think the cool, coolest part about that is, you know, being on Race Hub, we have the chance to work with so many analysts that come in the studio and so many guys that are currently driving, currently serving as crew chiefs or have in the past, and they get to tell those stories, the history of the sport. And we get a front row seat to hear all of that and, and to almost feel like you were there for moments you weren't. And I think having this experience this year with the 75 and the celebration, you get to listen to all the stories from yesteryear and get to reflect on all that. And I think that's kind of the coolest part about what this season means and being able to work with this team means as well. Yeah, and Jamie McMurray, who you see on Race Hub as an analyst, you'll also see him uh, doing some of our pre and post show uh, and, and part of the coverage here as he was uh, last year. Uh, Jamie, just the transition of what you thought of as a, as a driver and the TV coverage of NASCAR to now that you've been in it a few years on, on this side of it, what, what stands out to you? Well, I've said it a few times. I, I wish that, you know, if you could, in the perfect order, you would do TV first and then, then go drive a car. Because I'm working on that. I still have my... You have no chance. I'm okay. sorry. You have no chance. He's an expert. He's an analyst. Uh, just, just because from a driver's perspective, you don't, you don't really always know the angle that TV's coming from or, or what they need. And after you do this for a little while, you understand the, the, the different sides of this. And so, um, you know, I, Regan, everyone, Clint, uh, Tony... Being a driver and then coming and doing TV, you see the other side of that. Um, but TV has been has been so much fun for me to be able to tell what you think drivers are thinking and the emotions that they have inside of the car um, and just to see the other side of it. All right, thank you. And, and then to our pit reporters, uh, Jamie Little, Regan Smith, and, and both of you comment on uh, – Let's we can get specific about – this race, the clash, how cool it was, right? The first time last year and down there with the noise and the crowd and uh, the atmosphere to do your job. What This year, what kind of improvements or what can we expect and maybe describe what it was like for people? Yeah, I would say, and I've told people since this race last year, that was the most fun I have had covering a NASCAR race ever. It was just, those of you who were here, it was just unlike anything we had ever done before. We were learning as we went, and those stat books that we run around with and carry and drop, and it was out the window. You had to start from scratch, and it started at this race and went throughout the season. And, you know, we saw a lot of firsts, but the thing about this race and the clash this has become an event. People want to be part of this event. And I think now that, that we've seen this car, and this is the second time they're running it here, I think we're going to see a better race. I think now that we don't have those supply chain issues to the extent that we did last year, these guys aren't worried about wrecking a car because they're not going to have it in two weeks for Daytona. And on top of that, you've got new faces and new places. And I would say Kyle Busch 
had probably the best car here last year. And guess what? He's with a brand new team. And what does he want to prove? That he can win with another team. Even though there's no points on the line, Kyle Busch is going to be tough to beat. And then you got Tyler Reddick, who was probably the second or third best car last year. And he's flip-flopped now. So I can't wait to see what he does. So many storylines, but we just really cherish this moment. Fox is right here. This is their backyard. It's just, it's a special event, and I, I feel very honored to be part of it. Oh, well said. And Regan? Uh, yeah, I think yeah, I second a lot of what Jamie just said there. You know, for me, what's going to happen this weekend in this particular, we call it a race, but it is an event is what this has turned into already in, in just the second year, is going to look completely different. And, and I believe that because there was a number of cars last year that maybe uh, missed the setup or couldn't get things the way that they wanted with, with big name drivers, with drivers that are always up front that we expect to see up front. And you know, I think coming into this race this year, everybody's got a better idea of what they need, what they need their car to do, how they want to set their car up to do it. And, and I just think we are going to see an ultra competitive event out here that uh, when it gets down to the end of it, it, it's got a big event feel. And these guys all want to go after that trophy. They want to be they want to be first. They saw what Joey got to do last year. And uh, the clash has got a new feeling to it. It just it, it's such a great new vibe to what we're doing. Uh, I can't wait to see how, how aggressive it gets on Sunday and, and who can win it. Yeah, and the L.A. atmosphere, it, it'll probably be even more aggressive. We've, they've added more cars, as you know, and the, there's barely a quarter of a mile, which brings us to, to finally, before we get your questions, uh, thought of as America's crew chief for his success as a crew chief and a broadcaster crew chief, <laughs> Larry McReynolds, who I had mentioned earlier. And, and, Larry, I know you can go on and on, but maybe what's different? I know last year was a newer car and people worried about equipment, but what, what is different with the car this year that you think will we'll see or affect the race the most? Yeah, you, you know, even though this car, before we rolled in here a year ago, had been tested for almost two and a half years, it, it was still a clean sheet of paper. I've always said you can test until there's no more fuel and there's no more tires left, but you do not know what you've got until you drop a green flag and there's competition on the line with a checkered flag. And the drivers, the crews, the crew chiefs, the engineers rolled in here with no notes in their notebook. And we saw some, some gremlins. We saw some mechanical woes. Some of the best race cars were sitting in the infield. Chase Briscoe, Tyler Reddick with, with broken transaxle brackets. NASCAR rectified that before we went to Daytona. Denny Hamlin was sitting over there with some power steering woes. That's continued to be worked on. But probably the most notable thing that's been changed, and I applaud NASCAR for what they've done here. Uh, you know, we had a couple of drivers that, that was under – concussion protocol, most notably Kurt Busch that, that ended up retiring full time from rear impacts. And even before that, NASCAR was working on trying to figure out exactly what to do with the car. And you know, a lot of people may say, well, just take some bars out, just make some balls, bars thinner or weaker. Well, you've got 20 gallons of fuel back there and four and a half gallons of oil. You could not compromise when it comes to oil and fuel. So they started doing testing. So most notably, the difference is, is at the rear of the chassis, in the bumper structure where they've just basically took taken some bars out, they've made some bars smaller, they've made the walls of some of the bars thinner, and it's just where it's not as rigid. It's more forgiving. It'll have more crush, which is what they needed uh, to, to keep these doc drivers from having a hard impact when they back the car in the wall. Nothing you'll see when they're on the racetrack, <laughs> but when back them in the wall, I don't think we're going to be holding our breath quite as much. So real quick, though, in a nutshell, the racing you would expect to be maybe more aggressive and with more cars. Uh, see well, I, more I do. You know, we know now how more, much more durable these cars are. And to, to Regan and, and Jamie's point, they have notes in that notebook. They have a full year of notes in their notebook. They're you still don't want to come out here and tear a race car up, but you're not on eggshells worrying about tearing a race car up. And I know adding four more cars doesn't sound like a lot, but when you do it on a quarter-mile racetrack, the leader last year was catching the back of the pack before lap 20, and now there's four more cars added to the field. All right, so the format Chuck is what drives the aggression. The format, 25-lap heat races, it's quick, yeah. in your face. You have to be on point from the word go. 25 laps, and then it sets you up. If you don't make it out of that heat race, you're in the last chance to qualify. It's fourth and long. Now you've got to try to make it into that thing to get into the feature, 150 laps for all the marbles. The format is what's going to drive the it, aggression. And we know nine drivers, and we're going to see some big names, trust me. Nine drivers and teams are not going to make the big dance. They're going to have to load up and go to the house early. Right. Ed Chuck, uh, as the producer, I know you have an audio guy, so with the noise here, you, you can handle Clint's mic. You're in charge of that if you need to fade it down. Or, we, we got it. You got it? You got it covered. Okay. I kid. You know, I care. Right. Eddie, uh, so do you have any questions? If you do, just raise your hand, and either we'll get you a mic or I'll, yeah, just let me know where you're from uh, or what you're representing, just so they know, too. But thank you, sir. Go ahead. 
Hi, Jeff Gluck from The Athletic. For, for Tony, I remember you sitting up here last year and you said, you know, it, this is going to be about the show, the entertainment, and it, it doesn't matter if it's two, three wide. If people leave here happy and feeling they, like they got entertained, that's what is going to make it a success. Does that change at all in the second edition of this race, or is this event, the, the nature of it, always going to be more about the entertainment than the racing itself? Well, this sport is all about entertainment in general. I mean, that's what it's always been about. But as time goes on, what it takes to entertain everybody keeps evolving and changing. And it, you have to find more ways than just putting on a race. And that's what NASCAR's done a really good job with this event of making it truly an event. So I feel like that just holds true again this year. I mean, it's it's about everything. It's about it's about seeing the people's faces when they leave here. They had fun and they're smiling. And, the people that haven't been to a NASCAR race, but they're here to hear the music, maybe they become new NASCAR fans. And that's what this is all about, is getting people in seats and entertaining people at the end of the day. So if they're smiling when they're leaving, this is, this is a success, success at that point. It's the market, too. You don't want to make this at Talladega. We got a good market there. <laughs> we need a good, strong market here that's in your face, and that's what you have right there. You just want everybody in Los Angeles talking about this on Monday morning and saying, wow, what a great event that was. And last year, we, there, there was a lot of that. It, even, even there was curiosity. Uh, there was excitement that it was new. The fact that it's, it's back showed you that it worked. Uh, rooting for a third time, but we'll see that. So, but, but the schedule, just we were talking about, uh, not only uh, the format Clint was talking and, and, and the actual entertainment that Tony was talking about, but NASCAR trying like North Wilkesboro with this year, the, the all-star race, the Chicago street course is coming. This, this was kind of a gamble when they, when they took this on uh, prior to, to last year. So they're, they're trying to do things, maintain the integrity of what racing, the car, the driver is all about, and then add some creativity for uh, the idea of, of the entertainment value. And then it's up to the, the drivers, but which, by the way, Tony and, and Quinn, is that the hard? You guys see so you know you, you do games with football players, or and they see so many things because they played it, they lived it. Is the hardest part of your job fitting it in to that spot in a broadcast where where it works that you pick the best moment to cover and then fit it in in between who else is in the booth? Is that the one of the more difficult challenges? You know, I think for me, and again, you know, Jamie said it, you know, coming from that racer's perspective and being in the car all those years, you kind of come into the booth with a different perspective. You want to showcase that driver because I was that guy that, hey, maybe I won my day that day, but I was still on the racetrack, you know. So trying to take care of business uh, and take care of everybody out there is, is difficult. Yep. Um, but we all try to do that. We have a lot of help. Uh, Chuck coming on board with a fr – again – you know, fresh ideas. You heard him talk about that. That's, you know, it's important to have somebody come in with a fresh idea. It comes from college, you know, sports. Pretty sure they got things going on, right? Good and, uh, you know, to have him come in with a new perspective, a new vision with our sport that's been around for 75 years, you know, it's going to be, you're going to see new things. And I think that's important to keep evolving, um, you know, just like we do in the booth. Yeah, I think it's, uh, I think probably one of the hardest things is getting Clint to stop talking long oh, enough we just to had that, talk yeah. about something. <laughs> but, um, but, no, it's really fun. I, I, I think the great thing with working with Clint, and, and obviously Mike has such a knowledge of cars in general, let alone motorsports. He, his credentials speak for themselves. And, but working with Clint and the fun part of being able to race with him in the past, have him, having him drive for us at SHR, uh, and now getting to work in the booth – I told him earlier we were we were all having lunch and we were talking about a certain topic and uh, I told him I looked at him I said I never knew you were this smart I mean I don't know what <laughs> happened but he, he's super smart and the thing that really impresses me on Clint's side about working with him is this isn't a deal where you just show up you get makeup you put your clothes on and you go sit in a booth for a couple hours and commentate a race the amount of homework that I've seen Clint do with the races I got to do with him last year is unbelievable. I mean, for a Sunday race, he's watching the race on Friday. He's watching the race on Saturday. He's thinking about this. He's thinking about that. He goes, what if, what if they did this? And it, it's really fun and incredible yeah. to watch this different role and find the things that as drivers and former drivers, now what we're able to see and what we see in, in the sport and what we see on the racetrack, it, it's little things that a lot of times the the fans don't even see, but we see it because we know what no, we're looking right, for. And that's right. the fun part working with these guys is bringing those things that they don't see with the naked eye, bringing those and, and really putting and it in the focus to where now after that race, maybe the next race they right. look for that or they see something like that. And so that's the fun part. Let me add this about Clint. He has pushed us all to do a better job uh, for all the fun, for all the games, all the goofing around. Uh, the other day, he and Chuck and Artie Kempner, our director, sat 
and watched last year's clash. Here's what they saw. Here's what we didn't get to see. Well, why didn't we get to see that? What can we do a better job of? So he has pushed us all to be better, and we yeah. appreciate it. Yeah, no, like the blend of, of the racing and entertainment. Now, Clint said, Mike, that you've, you know, as a, as a reporter, pit reporter. Here's the biggest problem with it, and this is just the truth. We can't figure out why that helicopter's sitting back there at idle and won't move. So that's the problem. Are you with worried about? Clinton are you move. worried about that? We're be, trying to talk be, about the topic at hand, and that helicopter just hasn't moved for. That's a long probably time. our helicopter. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Clint Boyd. <laughs> yeah, it's just, that's what I don't know how Mike does it in the booth. I told on myself. We're, we're, we're going very much. We're going one way. He's going another way. That's probably we're, our helicopter getting a shot at the the Coliseum, Clint. What are you complaining about? You worry? What are you with the FAA? Relax over there. By the way, Mike Joyce, he knows that he's been around for a lot of years. He was, he was a waiter at the Streamline Hotel when they actually started. So 75 years, you know, I'm kidding. Any other questions before? You see, when I get to this level, you guys better ask. Cause I'm like, yes, go ahead, please. Oh, yeah, we'll get you a mic there. And, and yes. Thank you. Uh, Hannah Elliott with Bloomberg Business Week. Um, I'd love to know how closely you folks are watching the rise of Formula One in the U.S. Uh, do you feel that it relates to what you do at all? And um, I'd like to know the challenges that you saw going into Los Angeles specifically. What is something that Angelinos get wrong about NASCAR? Well, um, I did Formula One for Fox 1998 to 2000 uh, with Derek Bell, fantastic driver and a great analyst. And we had the same 300,000 viewers nationwide every week. The rating never varied, whether we were on Fox or Fox Sports Net or, or however it was positioned. And it was very hard to grow out of that. Certainly Drive to Survive has brought a whole new audience uh, to Formula One, people that enjoy reality TV, people that enjoy soap operas. And f racing is a soap opera. It's just, it's just different the way it plays out on Sunday. But Formula One is a worldwide phenomenon, and it's, it's, I think it's completely different from NASCAR, especially in regard to the workings within the teams. Tony would know best because his partner has a Formula yeah. One team. But I think here... NASCAR is much more of an every man for himself or every driver for himself than the structure of Formula One. And I think the one thing Angelinos get wrong about NASCAR is they think it's the same car every week. They think the driver is driving the exact same car, the exact same chassis at Daytona that he raced here, and all they did was change the gears, and he goes fast there and not so fast here. And I think that's one of the biggest misconceptions. The other biggest misconception that everybody out on the 405 has is they could do this, no problem. <laughs> and that's not... No, they couldn't. I drove here Angeles. last night, and yeah, none right. of them could do yeah. this. They, can't no. get, they can barely drive in the damn parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was, that was Clint driving in. But, uh, no, I want to, as someone who grew up in the South and, and live in California now, I, I think the other thing, and there is a stick, but this, this is not, NASCAR is not a regional sport. We know the roots, and we know historically where it began. But it has reached, and you can see, and it, it, the history of, of racing in California, maybe not at the highest uh, promoted level, but it's been here in, in, in the roots for years. And, and I think the variety of tracks and the exposure, and, of course, national television over, over here. In fact, if you look at where the best drivers come, right, we go through the states. They used to, you know, Carolina, Georgia, and there's still that shit. But now you have drivers from Las Vegas and California and, and champions of, of the sport. So it's not, and I, I think there is... And, and I see that in some other places uh, around the country when we travel and do races of just, again, it's changing, and it's changing over time. But it's not a, it's not a click group. It's open to every, We all relate to our cars now, whether it's, you know, Uber or renting a car or leasing a car or, or you know, a plug-in car. You know, we connect with that, and that's what this sport should be about, no matter where the roots are from, and, and relate to a driver, uh, if, even if you don't connect with necessarily one of the manufacturers that, that, you're, that you're watching. I, I, I sense that here. Yeah. Well, and to add to that I think sometimes we always hear well NASCAR doesn't look like me I don't look like those people that are there and I think if you take a hard look at NASCAR now the face of it is very different I mean you see women you see us in all different roles you look around how many women are in the media core I mean Josh Sims on board we have Bubba I mean you have so many people look what Daniel Suarez has done he won a huge race a cup race in Sonoma here in California and you see his legion of fans like that's my guy, and this is my sport. And it wasn't like that 15 years ago. We had the diversity awards last night. I mean, NASCAR has come so far, and I think that that is that preconceived notion that NASCAR isn't like me. But if you look now, it is, and that's why we're in a place like Los Angeles. That's the only thing. They didn't do anything wrong. 
Give us a try, and you'll like the product. Yeah. Yeah. This is tailored, made for you right here in this <laughs> market. You have action like the sports never had, a different format. We take a break and put on a, a concert, for crying out loud. I guarantee yeah. you I'll put my money up against this product versus anything F1 brings to the United States. <laughs> wow. On the All racetrack. Right. That's a challenge. The racetrack. Uh, yeah. uh, yes, sir. Quite, we'll get you a microphone back there. Thank oh, you. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Richard Marcello, The Racing Show. Glad to have, I'm a native born and raised here. Uh, talking about Formula One, I just got the word that in Las Vegas in November, they're going to have a Formula One race, and the strip is going to be part of the track. Right. So uh, I'm, I'm signed up for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think and, we'd all like this, to be there. And Cliff Boyer, i got to talk to you when we're done. i got a photo I want to show you. All you, right. you will love it, my friend. Welcome yeah. all. You're love on. you, and good racing. Hey, NASCAR well, is going to the streets of Chicago. Yeah. Bring it on. And, that and, race is going to be better and, than any product that you'll see and, over there. And the variety of tracks that She's whether a Vegas you, girl. you can go to yeah. Sonoma, you can go to the, the NASCAR race in Las Vegas has the garage, which is uh, each track has its own unique. Some are, are more historical, some are, are, are more current, but they provide something different, as Clint said, for this is tailor made for, for LA, obviously, in, in the Coliseum, but there's a lot of different ways to, to catch a race. Yes, sir. Zach Sterniola with NASCAR.com. From Mike, uh, just the backdrop here. There's the Hollywood sign, the cityscape uh, skyline. Um, how much does the atmosphere and where this Coliseum sits plays into how big of an event this is? I went to college in Boston, and walking around Boston Common, I all, all I was always on, on my daily walk, boy, this would make a great corner. This would make a great course. What kind of cars could we run here? What could we do? And, and to be here and to see what's behind us, and to know, and, and I go back to those little quarter-mile tracks where we started on, both dirt and paved. We raced at Islip Long Island, which was two-tenths of a mile smaller than this track. And cup cars ran there. And now we're here. And we're not at Irwindale. Anybody here know where Irwindale is? Can anybody get to Irwindale from here? I'm not sure. We're not in Fontana, or Fontucky, as it's sometimes called, because that's... We're right in the heart of Los Angeles. And for this sport to have come that far, for the people that run NASCAR to have been that brave to completely break the mold and say, we're going to go back to what we used to do in 1956 at Soldier Field in Chicago. And we're going to pave a track inside a stadium. We're going to run the cup cars there. And we all were excited as, we, as, excited as we thought they were crazy. And look at this. I mean, this, this is fantastic. It's not Field of Dreams. That's going to happen when we go to Wilkesboro uh, for the All-Star Race in May. But this is so special. And Artie's got drones and helicopters in so many different <laughs> ways to show what a special venue this is. And hopefully, what an impact this has on Los Angeles at large. That I'm just thrilled to be here. I think if you, let me add on that, I, I, I think if you show someone a picture of the Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum, they know exactly what it is. I know Chuck and I have worked football games here before, so I've been here as a sideline reporter for, for college football, and it is incredible. The one thing last year that I wished that we had was that I wish that it would finish under the lights, and that's what we're going to have this season. I think with the, the torch lit and, and the cars on the racetrack and the rotors and all of that stuff that we're going to see uh, Sunday it, it this, at this location, it's going to, I, I mean, I can't, I can't wait. I'm so excited. That was the one thing I thought was missing last year, and we've got it this year. Yep. Tony will explain what a rotor is to me a little later, I hope. All right. Uh, thank all of you for taking a moment. I know it's been a busy schedule with Race Hub, the broadcast of the show. And, and thanks uh, to you for being here and for helping to promote uh, this unique event for NASCAR and, and Fox. All right. We enjoy the clash and 75 years of NASCAR. Thank you very much.